Well, sometimes the lines just draw you in to a particular product. And the design on the Fox Knives Ziggy absolutely does that. As soon as this dropped onto the market, I gravitated to its look, its feel, its design. And today, we're gonna dive in to this Italian-made blade from Fox Knives to see what it has to offer. Well, that's right, folks. Welcome back to another video. I'm Aaron, and we're gonna have a good time as we look at this very organically flowing blade. That's just what comes to mind. As soon as I saw this hit the market, I was like, ooh, that looks really, really slick. I mean, it's slim, it's sleek, but it's not too um, uh, light and too small. Um, that it's got a little bit of heft, it's got a little bit of size and beef to it at the same time. It's just got such an organic but very uh, European look to the profile of this Ziggy produced by Fox Knives. And I haven't had a lot of um, experience with Fox Knives, so I wanted to get my hands on this. So I actually reached out to one of our affiliates, GP Knives. I've purchased tons of gear through them. They've done an awesome job. They're always quick with their shipping, good return policies, things like that. Uh, I, re I reached out to him and I said, hey, I want to take a look at this blade. Would you be willing to send it over for me to test out and review so I could give you guys not only the information, the data, the possibilities and capabilities of the blade, but also give you pros and cons and show you some maybe some competitive options to just give you guys a good feel for this Ziggy. So they were willing to send it over to us. So we're gonna have some fun today as I really show you guys what its capabilities are. We're gonna break down all the aspects to it. Like I said, I'll roll in a few competitive options as well to give you some food for thought just show you what this has going on. And we'll have links for you guys over to GP Knives in the links below. And we'll talk about all that uh, in a little bit when we hit um, price point and competitive options. So with that, guys, let's go ahead, jump to it and see what the Ziggy has going on. All right, guys, let's go ahead and look here at the blade. We're looking at a blade length of three and a quarter inches, and we have a thickness of 0 0.14 there. Now, this is the blacked out version, which is holding up very well, smoked out, really looks nice. You can get either a satin or stone wash finish is out there as well. This is going to have basically a full flat grind. The transition stops just a, like just a hair right there. Um, not a 90 degree spine. It's slightly rounded. Good precise tip, but not feeling like too weak and flimsy. And at that 0.14, just a hair over an eighth of an inch thick, you're going to get a very stout blade. But because of how uh, high the, the edge to spine is, the geometry is so gradual that it's a great wicked slicer. And the belly really works well. Great edge geometry out of the box. Was really happy with that. Just a really, really good slicer. On the other side here, we've got the N690, uh, where it was made in Italy, and then the designer. Um, really, really cool. Very well done. Just looks great. I love the drop that it has right there. So, I mean, that's part of it is just the blade shape really, really connected with me. I was like, man, that looks freaking good. Um, and then the N690, it's Rockwell 58 to 60. Uh, I really like N690. Never had a, a beef with it. It's basically like a type of VG10. Um, it, what I have always found is if it's um, Italian or like sometimes Spain um, in Germany, you know, just kind of depends on where you get it. Um, European manufacturers tend to do a really good job. They really know the steel well, very rust resistant, um, and uh, uh, it will hold a good edge and better than some kind of like uh, lower rock weld and lower heat treated VG10. It definitely holds its edge a lot better than say like Spyderco's VG10, way, way better. Um, than that and on par I've seen with some S30Vs depending on where you know you're you're getting the S30V and what they did with it so just really well done very good edge retention um, for kind of that it's it's not a super steel but it's definitely starting to on the higher end of that mid grade you know like 154cm and S30V and VG10 it's definitely done well with the the Rockwell as well as the heat treat so guys the blade shape is an amazing performer for all the EDC stuff I was doing all the work I was doing with this thing it's just a great utility shape that'll get a lot of edc stuff food prep stuff around the home and even if you did want to you know throw it into some sort of uh outdoor you know doing some carving or just food prep you know around a campsite or something like that you could absolutely do it with the blade shape and the steel that they decide to go with is going to um, be very rust resistant and hold a good edge all right guys let's go ahead and hit uh, lock up deployment all that stuff first we'll hit that flipper really nicely done no jimping on it to worry about, but it's not slick, so it's not um, 
uh, hard to engage. It's very easy to engage um, the flipper. Just hit that thing, boom, and it flies right open. Now it rides on bronze, I believe, like caged ball bearings. So you see the bronze, um, you see the bronze in there, and then this ball bearing. So it's very, very, very smooth. And when we flip that guy open, got some slight rock side to side, none up and down, nice and solid. The um, stop bar is inside the pivot, so it runs on a little track and then hits. I don't know how well you guys can see that in there. So there's not like a stationary um, stop bar. It slides and rolls in there and the ro rolls into place. And then you got your liner lock that engages. Liner lock is perfect. No real issues there. Hits about 40% of the blade. Good, solid. And uh, what was really nice, even when I was bearing down on it, and sometimes you'll feel this with uh, liner locks, you'll feel if, if you're doing really hard push cuts, you'll actually, because you're putting so much pressure on that stop bar and just the very minute movements, the lo the liner lock will actually shift slightly and become further, you know, like it'll just go further. Sometimes if it's a, a low quality knife, it'll jam. Uh, I never felt it even shifting uh, when I was doing the super hard um, push cuts. So the tolerances there are really well done. The liner lock just barely like a micron past the handle scale there. And it does have a little bit of jimping on it. So it is easy for me to grab and disengage and close, but it's not going to be this big abrupt liner lock that I'm going to feel when I'm doing harder cuts for longer periods of time. And then the centering is dead center there. And when I first got it out of the box, I was kind of concerned. I was like, whoa, is that tip buried in there enough? But I worked on that thing all over the place and I could not catch it. So um, it may look like that at first glance, but I could not catch it any which way. I was playing with it a bunch. Um, so it is recessed just enough against the tall. That's just something that I noticed with this knife and that you'll see is like definitely Italian precision in this tool. The, the, the micron attention to detail makes this thing just feel like a Ferrari or something, you know, just a really well-built like Italian sports car or something is how this, uh, all the things fit and fit together and the fit and finish is excellent. And it has a really good detent as well. You're not going to accidentally flick that thing open, but it is very easy to overcome it when you do use the flipper. So zero complaints there really with the deployment and lockup on the Ziggy. All right, guys, we'll dive into the handle and the ergonomics. This is a carbon fiber. I do believe that there are some other versions that exist out there. I believe there's like a, a hardwood handle version, but this is the carbon fiber version. It's going to be four and a half inches long from front to back, and then it's going to be a thickness of 0 0.59, so just a hair over half an inch thick. You do have that back spacer right there, lots of flow through, which is nice. Really scalloped well. The transitions are not harsh in any way. Nice transitions right here. You're gonna have that large lanyard hole, easily fit 550 th paracord through. Um, the pocket clip is nice and contoured and doesn't flare out too much, so it doesn't hurt the handle ergonomics in any way. Uh, it's gonna come in at about four ounces is uh, what I'm seeing there. And then you do have those liners in there, those steel liners that have been cut out a little bit just to give some good balance to the tool. And then you can see here, I have large size hands fits my hand super well, got room to spare, no jimping or anything, but the slight uh, curvature just really cups the hand well. Good cut in there with the flipper, really locks me into place, and then just the way the scallops are and things like that, just feels really good without it being like overly uh, grippy, you know, or hard traction. So it just feels good, and because it's slightly thicker handle scale, it's gonna fill out your hand really well. Now it's not like this ultra slim, ultra light, even though it's got carbon fiber folder, it does have a little bit of half and a little bit of beef to it, um, but it still has this really nice balance and elegance with those carbon fiber handle scales. So I'll touch on really the only drawback that I'm seeing overall with the design the features the capability is the pocket clip. Um, I actually don't mind the kind of high ride. It makes it easier to pull out of the pocket. Obviously deep ride, some of you would love to see. Um, you know, it, it comes with about three quarters of an inch sticking out of the pocket, but because it's blacked out everything, it's not as huge a deal and it's not going to be as noticed. And again, as I said, when we we're talking about ergonomics, not um, too obnoxious or too painful for um, when you're holding the blade. And because of the carbon fiber there, um, though the tension between the carbon fiber and the pocket clip 
retains it in the pocket very well. It's not going to thrash your pocket when you pull it out. So that's a that's a really good thing. But it's not ambidextrous. I mean, there's no reason the flipper, uh, the liner lock could easily be used for lefties, but there's just no way to attach it for lefties. They could have easily just added one more screw or something here, put a little base plate, and then been able to swap it for lefties. I think it could have been easily an ambidextrous pocket knife. As it is, it really is not designed, and it's only for righties. So I believe that is a drawback to the overall design. All right, guys, let's go ahead and hit price here for you on this knife. This tool is going to go for about $195, about 200 bucks probably with tax, um, is what you can usually expect for this tool. Now, um, for Italian made with these type of materials, it's actually about the going rate. Um, you know, manufacturing in Italy just costs a little bit more. Um, I'm actually, just with everything going on in the world today, really conscientious of uh, where my tools are being manufactured, particularly my knives. And I'm glad that this is made in Italy. And if those of you who are interested in this tool, you know, we're able to support um, Italy right now with all of the coronavirus and just like their shutdown of their economy, you know, helping their economy even, um, I think is an important thing to even just consider when you are looking at tools like this. Now, again, GP Knives sent this over to me to test review and give you guys my feedback. So we'll have links for you guys below. Um, Shout out to them as well. I mean, I was purchasing gear way before they ever became an affiliate through them, and I was just really happy um, with their prices, their um, you know service, all of that, and that's why I decided to pick them up as uh, an affiliate. So um, that's what that is going to cost. And then just to give you one competitive option, when I was looking through my entire collection, really the only thing that kind of stuck out is something similar would be the Steel Will uh, Mini Gecko. It's about the same size. Uh, it's also made in Italy. Um, they have a couple different versions of different steels out there. If you, I believe they do have an N690 um, uh, version, so very similar. This is in the M390 version, which will be about 230, 240 um, is what the M390 version will be, so slightly higher end steel. If you go with either their D2 um, or their N90, uh, sorry, N690 version, uh, I believe it's right around the same cost. I think like 170 to 190 uh, just kind of depends on who, what, when, where, why. But that's this is a very similar design knife, but some of you don't really connect with lockbacks. This is a lockback design. The deployment is good. This is smoother. The Fox knives will be smoother. So similar, but um, got some different features there, and I just wanted to run in a competitive option for you guys to consider. Well, there you have it, folks. I hope you have enjoyed this video. That has been fun entertaining i totally get it particularly in this time frame with a lot of worldwide shutdowns and stuff just getting some entertainment value but also informative showing you what the lines are what the capabilities are if there are any drawbacks and just giving you some food for thought and showing you what the capabilities of the ziggy are so uh again just really appreciate you guys taking the time out watching this video and as always when i make this type of content i'm just wanting to give you guys data showing you what the pros and cons of a product are so that you can make those wise choices on whether or not it's something that will fit inside your systems for me i, I really <laughs> lately particularly and i got a lot of pocket knives i'm working with right now i honestly love throwing this in my pocket playing with it and then using it regardless if it's just doing some food prep in preparation for dinner or if it's opening the next Amazon package that arrived at the house or just going out and getting the groceries. But regardless of what the situation may be, I've been really enjoying EDCing this Ziggy and it definitely has a lines and a profile and an action that really works for me and I gravitate to and just connect with. It's just a fun blade to use. So look forward to hearing your guys' thoughts and comments below on whether or not you see value in the Ziggy and whether or not it's a design and a layout that really connects with you or not. Uh, really appreciate all of you. Check out the other video popping up. Subscribe if you're not a current subscriber. You can check us out on Instagram and Facebook. We're throwing up content there all the time as well. And always remember, guys, you're not alone. Stay equipped, stay prepared, and we'll see you out there.